was it like working with Snoop Dogg for the Dana White Contender Series? <laughs> so that was the first year of the Contender Series. And I actually thought it was brilliant um, by Dana and, and the rest of that crew that decided to go with Snoop because they, as you know, RJ, they started the Contender Series from, from nothing. Mm-hmm. And essentially what it is and what it was is a pipeline for guys who are on the cusp of getting a UFC contract or some guys who are in the UFC and then got cut after a couple of losses to get back in. So it's a five fight card on Tuesday nights. And at the end of the night, this is the hook. Dana will award a contract or several contracts to select winners that he deems worthy of fighting in the UFC. And it's become a major pipeline for the UFC in the last three or four years. So the first year to create a little buzz, they had what was called, the Snoop cast with Snoop Dogg and Uriah Favor. And then they had, I'll just call it the straight cast, you know, just regular call in the fights with, uh, with me and Eve Edwards. And um, so they were in another area, right? So I wasn't calling the fights with Snoop, which would have been awesome. Um, the, the crazy thing is the whole thing kind of evolved because Snoop would come in and, he his area was kind of above the octagon um at the ultimate fighter gym there and he was smoking and drinking some gin and juice and it got to the point where the smoke was spilling over into the octagon (laughs) and so the fans and the fighters were smelling all the weed so they had to be like snoop bro you you can't smoke during the fights so i think he started vaping a little bit and there then we still go. have his have his gin and juice with man. Ryan. And it was a crazy call. Like, I'll be honest, I just started and we're still learning how to, the process of calling fights and um, hopefully getting better as, as each fight went on. But I can't imagine anybody who's listening to us with Snoop Dogg there, you know, smoking and, and sipping on some gin and juice with Hall of Famer Uriah Faber watching those fights. Because it really was <laughs> like, you know, I had my boards out and you know, RJ, you know how it looks when somebody's calling a fight. Sure, yeah. And they were just like smoking and drinking and talking. And it was just a different call. <laughs> uh, so I remember after probably the second or third week, Snoop would go out. He had like a little trailer where he'd hang out with his guys. And that was when um, um, uh, O'Malley. Sean O'Malley. Sugar yeah. Sean O'Malley. He won his fight and he went in the trailer and – that's kind of like what when he blew up, like he he smoked with Snoop in the trailer, got his picture taken, and, and then everything like, oh man, this little kid's good. And then Snoop started talking about him. On That's stage. like catching a pass from Joe Montana smoking with Snoop, you know? Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. And and, and I, I remember I went in the trailer and uh, you know talked to Snoop for a little bit and had met him a couple of times before, you know, from NFL Network. And he's good buddies with Willie McGinnis, who I work with a lot. They're both from Long Beach, grew up together. Blah blah blah. And um, I said, I, I probably should not take a puff and get my picture taken with Snoop. May not be good for the, uh, for the NFL network career. So I passed on that at that moment. For the private collection. Private yeah, collection exactly. Yeah. Um, but it was cool, man. He only did it, you know, as, he only did it for one year and the, and the contender series continued on. But now, now he's doing other fights. Yep. So now he's jumped back into the fight game. Yeah. Who's the most is you've also worked with Daniel Cormier, mm-hmm. um, you know, you former UFC champion, Olympic wrestler, one of the, one of the funnest guys in MMA. He's awesome. Is, and, but you've worked with a million talents, different, different talents over your, over the years. Is there anyone more disruptive in a production meeting than Daniel Cormier? Anybody at all? <laughs> Cause yeah. I've been in many with him as well. I work, I, you know, for those who don't know, I work in UFC as well. And if you're trying to get something done with DC and you think it takes 10 minutes, give yourself 30. Cause that guy's nonstop. Yeah, I'll give you one. Um, and I don't know if disruptive is the right word, but unique might be a little better. Okay. Um, my my game, last game that I did for Fox this year was with Aqib Tlaib. And he would let me ask all my questions in the production meeting of the players and the coaches, but the players wanted to ask him questions, yeah. right? They wanted, they wanted to get his take. He's fresh off the field on what he was doing. And it's actually pretty similar to what fighters, when they, you know, they could hear what DC and those guys were saying during those, those first few fights where there were no fans there because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And you remember there were a couple of them that actually took what DC said and applied it in the octagon. Um, No, I mean, I've been really lucky, you know, with the contender series and um, actually called a, 
a card, uh, Ultimate Fighter card on uh, Fox with DC. Paul Felder is an unbelievable yep. professional, constant. I mean, he's really good, and you could tell he has that he has that classic training in, in acting, right? So mm -hmm. he's just uber comfortable in front of the camera. And then talk about characters. Bisping's another one. Yeah. You know, Michael Bisping is, is, is very much like Cormier and that both of those guys, like there's nobody on the planet you'd rather have a beer with 